Everyone, please say heart source. And since this is for the Sedona Journal, there'll be many people who won't know how to establish the heart source. And let me take you through that right now. Focus on the front of your heart center. And feel yourself go deep within your consciousness, your awareness to go deep into the front. Deep breath. Focus on the back of your heart center. It's in your back. Just go through the back right across from the front and go deep within. This is a different experience in the back because this takes you into a sacred space. Go as deeply as you can. There you go. Now go into the front of your brow center, your third eye. Go deep within. Great. And now into the back of your third eye at the back of your head. And go deep within. And now just imagine, and it, with your image, with your imagining, it'll form the energy from your heart to your th third eye. Just notice how that feels. And now send that beam of energy straight up to the center of the universe. It knows where to go. Keeping everything where it is, now move down and send the beam of energy. Anchor it into the center of the earth. And now let's bring everybody into one room. All those who are listening, all those who will be reading, are hearing this message at a later time. As you know, there is no time, so we can bring everybody in together. And there is a floor of light below us, a canopy of light above us, a pillar of light in each corner. And there are angels from Archangel Michael's band and from Gabriel's band who are standing at attention, relaxed attention, I was just told, from pillar to pillar to pillar to pillar to pillar surrounding the room and there is a pillar in the center of the room in the middle of all of us and in that pillar are numerous beings who are coming in Melchizedek Kuan Yin White Buffalo Calf Woman This is interesting. This is an energy of a feminine being I've not seen before. She has, it's like when she moves, she has stars sparkling all around her. Mother Mary's coming in. Buddha and Jesus, also known as Sananda, are coming in. Invite any other beings who are important to you to come in. Let your angels and guides be gathered around you. And now send a beam of energy from your heart to the central pillar so that we are all connected. And I ask you to send a beam of energy to my heart to support me in bringing Amma, the Divine Mother of the Divine Mothers, in. Good morning to you, dear ones. How wonderful to be here with you. It is just grand, is it not? It is just grand to be able to gather together to know that every one of you can gather together, no matter where you are, in one place. That will really throw off balance most of the world, will it not? And yet here we are. 
And I am Amma, the Divine Mother of the Divine Mothers, and oh, my precious ones, I am your mother. So a request has been made. The request has been for me to talk more about the heart source. I suppose it is time. According to your time, it's been several years since I introduced you to the heart source. You have established it. Did you notice the difference in your energy when you establish the heart source? The heart source is an example of the power within your energy field. You notice I did not add anything different. I did not bring any other strange energies in. I did not bring in any other symbols. I simply used what was already there. Your chakras. And then I connected those chakras. Well, I didn't. I had you do that, correct? You connected those chakras. That was the first step in the connection, moving that beam of energy from your heart into your third eye. And you felt a difference, did you not? Because when you did that, you brought together a connection. You brought together the ability, the ability to fully integrate those two chakras. Your scientists are coming out with something called the heart brain, knowing that the heart also is a brain, that the brain, this thing in your head that some people use not so much, correct? This brain has energy within it, tremendous numbers of nerves and dendrites and connections, encodements. It has an energy that needs to be activated. Now your heart, not just your heart chakra, but your physical heart as a brain also has many, many energetic connections in it. Some we've talked about at different times over the years, one of them being that small energy center at the top of your heart. All you need to do is connected. You activate it with your intention and with your energy. So the heart source brings together two powerful chakras, not the two most powerful. Every chakra, if one of them is out of balance, that's the one most powerful at the time, is it not? If your first chakra is closed off and you're having physical problems, if you're having relationship problems, that's the most important one and powerful one at the time, is it not? Yet, when you bring together the heart and the brain, the physical heart and the physical brain, you activate within you parts of the Adam Kadmon, or what I prefer to call the divine blueprint, so it doesn't throw people off tremendously. But others love that mystical name, Adam Kadmon. It brings that together into unity. This, my dear ones, was how you were created and what was to happen with you. What changed all of that? Well, the industrial age is one thing that changed it. That's the latest thing that changed it. Well, I shouldn't say the latest, because your technological age changed it also. Because what happens with the technology, so we'll start more from the present and go backwards. What happened with your technology is you begin to, to rely upon all of these amazing, electrical, wonderful, exciting electronics that you have and forget to use things that are within you that you can use yourself. Instead of using the energies within yourself to communicate with yourself, to gather information, you're depending upon electronics. Use your electronics as an affirmation of things or as something that triggers some energies that are coming in and then use your own energy, your own intuition 
your own abilities to connect within yourself to the deep knowingness of yourself. Your heart source allows you to do that. It allows you to connect intuitively. It opens up your energy field. Now, the other thing backwards, going backwards, I mentioned the industrial age first, is the industrial age. Why did the industrial age disturb things? Does that mean there's something wrong with it? No, there's nothing wrong with it. But you cannot leave your connection to the planet to then manufacture things. And that's what has happened, is that people left their connection to nature. When you were in the agrarian society, when you were hunters and when you were gatherers, you were deeply connected to the planet and to the rhythms of the planet. When you moved into the industrial age, you lost that natural rhythm. Your time was no longer set by the rising and the setting of the sun. Your time was set with alarm clocks, with the bells that rang that said you have to be there at 7 a.m., you have to work this number of hours, you have to sleep at these times instead of going with the rhythm of the earth. That disconnected you from the natural energy. I think your scientists call it the circadian rhythm. That is within you. It is possible to be involved with the industrial age and with the technological age and still be connected to the rhythms of the planet. It takes some effort. Now another thing that disconnected you from this whole sense of being able to be in tune with your energy field, oh, this might hurt some people. I don't mean to offend anybody, but this is reality, is this thing called Christianity. Because what happened is that Christianity, not in its purest forms, not in its mystical form, not in its connection with the divine form, but in its form that said you have to follow it in this way, disconnected you from the planet. Why do I say that? Well, think about the Wiccans, right? Think about that tradition. Many people would call them witches. They were able to communicate with the plants and with the animals. They were in tune with the planet. But those who wanted to have power over you, not power with you, but power over you, took away the mysticism, that part that you can't rationalize, the ability to chat with the tree in your yard, the ability to listen to the animals, because then they called it pagan. They called it against the Christ energy. Oh, my dear ones, how against the Christ energy was their view. Because the Christ energy, as it is seen in the Christian tradition and as it originally came in, had no reason to start a religion. It was to introduce people to inner power. Now, this one has had a belief for a long time, and I'm going to affirm her belief, that the core of the Christian tradition is what is called the Sermon on the Mount. Now, those of you who have not studied that may not be aware of it, but let me give you a few things about it. Do not be angry. Now I'm going to expand on that. Hold, do not hold on to your anger. Hold on to that which motivates you. If your anger motivates you to make changes in your life and changes in the world, yes, use that power, but transmute it with love. What would happen 
if those who call themselves Christians today let go of their anger. Another thing that was said in the sermon was, which by the way was not just one sermon historically, although they say that, it's a collection of sayings, was to forgive was to let go of the anger, of the fear, right? Now let's think about this in regards to the heart source. Say heart source again, in case I disturbed your peace. Be there in your heart. Now bring to mind someone that you are concerned about. Let's bring it back to someone you're angry with that you'd rather not see. Say heart source again. Bring that person into your heart source. You just need to hold the intention. There's no magic to it. Can you feel a disconnection from the emotion of anger, the emotion of betrayal, the emotion, whatever emotion it is, when your heart source and that person is in your heart source? Now say to that person, you are love incarnate. Now say to that person, I choose to no longer have my life affected by what has happened in the past. Spin your chakras. Just say chakra spin and set your intention to release from every chakra, the energy, the fear, the anger, the sense of betrayal, the jealousy, the envy, whatever it is, it is all not love. To release that from you. Now, look at that person again. Do you feel, see, sense them differently? Bless them. Say, I wish for you all of the things that I most wish to have. Go now. And now notice how you feel. This is one of the things you can do with your heart source. I have said before, you have heard it, is that any time that you experience not love, you are out of your heart source. So anytime you are experiencing that, move back into heart source. And sometimes when the emotion is so strong, when it is someone who has wounded you so deeply, you may need to go through the entire process step by step of moving into the front of your heart, moving into the back, and so on. So let's talk about what the heart source actually is. A way to explain it to a child. You could explain it like an automobile, that when you want to go somewhere, you open the car door, you get in, and your parents drive the car and take you somewhere. 
The heart source is a light, L-I-G-H-T, vehicle. It actually bonds with your light body, with your Merkaba, and allows you with your intention by using the aspects of the heart source in its most powerful way allows you to travel in places you had never dreamed and to do so safely. The little exercise that you just did allowed you to travel to the place before you were wounded because you freed yourself and of course you may need to repeat the process again but you began to free yourself from the pain, from the energy, from the bonds that were holding you bound in a negative way to that individual. You were able to travel with your intention by using just a few simple processes to a time before the wounding. And yes, for some of you, it is healed completely. For others of you, it's decreased. And you keep repeating it. You simply keep repeating it. Now, let's do the same thing. We're going back. I want you to bring the same. It could be the person. It could be the incident. So say heart source again. That's just to have you fully there. Now bring the person or incident you worked with before into your heart source, that energy of them. Now ask this question of yourself. You might want to jot down answers. What wisdom have I gained from this experience? What wisdom have I gained from this experience? Now, just for fun, here's another question to ask of yourself. Could I have gained this wisdom in another way? And you may have received a yes, because certainly you could have, correct? Now ask, was I willing to gain this wisdom in another way. So just thank the person, the situation, and again, allow them to go. So you have no negativity within you. And look at what you have gained. And now offer gratitude. Offer appreciation to the person and to the situation. Your heart source allows you to travel. It allows you to travel in this physical body that you have. 
and it allows you to travel outside of this physical body that you have. Before you go to sleep at night, when you're getting ready for bed, say heart source. And ask your heart source to expand fully around your body to the outer reaches of your bed. You can experience that right now. Just ask your heart source to expand beyond your physical body. Feel, see, sense the difference. If you don't feel, see, or sense it, just know that it is expanded. This one I speak through when she starts driving all these many miles that she drives. She not only expands her heart source out, she expands the room that you went in that was created with the floor of light and the canopy of, of light. She expands it. She says a six inch diagonal, six inches diagonally from each corner of the car so that nothing can go within the car. You can do that with your bed. You can do that when you walk into a place you know is not going to be much fun or a place you thought was going to be much fun and then it's not much fun. It doesn't really matter. You can just expand it around you so the energies from others don't come in. And you can even try this right now. This is great fun. Just again, say heart source, strengthen. Now this one, when she said that, she kind of did a double take because she noticed that the energy in her heart strengthened. Now you may have noticed it differently because it will be different from all of you. When you know that you're going to be walking into a place that has energies you would rather not have, that could be a mall, for instance. It could be an office. It could be a sporting event. It could be a political rally. You can simply program your heart source by setting your intention of what you would like. For instance, protect me from all energies of not love which are coming towards me. When you are in your heart source, because you are connecting very particularly your heart and your brain, then you are bringing into balance your rational and intuitive sides. Now let me show you another little trick. So you know your heart and all of you are deeply in your heart source. Your head, oh, I pointed the wrong direction, did I not? Your heart, your head. Now, bring to mind your throat chakra. Now say, heart source, activate my throat chakra to speak and act the truth. Now you might discover you have a little congestion. So since we're just working with the throat chakra, just say throat chakra spin. And just say heart source release anything that is not of love. 
and allow that to leave your body. You could potentially be within your heart source and just go through chakra by chakra. So let's say heart source and focus on your first chakra there at the base of your spine and say, I am ready to release all that is holding me back that I gathered from my family. Now we're going to use family in a broad perspective. This can be your family of origin. It can be the family you grew up in. It could even be a social institution. And you can identify it as such. My family of the United States of America, my family of Canada, my family of, and you can use your province, you can use your state, you could use your city. My family of Catholicism, as this one was so involved with Catholicism. My family of work, whatever your work is. My family of whatever it is you're volunteering with. Your family being that which you are vote so involved with that it is an active part of your life. My family of my animals, my family of my farm, my family of whatever, those are all first chakra issues. Now simply say chakra spin. Keep spinning. That's a really active one for everyone. All humanity has many, many first chakra issues. Good. So that gives you a few examples of how you can use your heart source with greater power. So now let me give you some more left brain information. When you say heart source and you connect it in that way, you are overlaying the heart source over your light body, what people call your Merkaba, where you can travel. And you can definitely travel to other planets, to other times within your heart source. We might have to do that sometime, correct? So if you want to explain it to a child, you can tell them it's an invisible force field that you can establish that helps you in your life. It helps you have good dreams. It can protect you when people are mean to you. It can help you go get over things more quickly. So what I want you to see, those of you who are not children, is that when you say heart source and you are conscious of your energy field, it integrates with your energy field and strengthens it. It would be as if you were repairing a screen, for instance, and you're putting something over the hole in the screen. Or let's say you just want to strengthen the screen and you put another layer of paint or something else over it. A sealant of some kind. That's what your heart source does. At its minimum, that is what it does. What it does when you fully use it is it opens your intuition. It assists you in connecting with other people in a way in which you know certain things about them. I'm not talking about details of where you're actually invading their energy. What I'm talking about is as you're talking to a car dealer, for instance, and you 
heart source and you set the intention to be able to know the truth of what that car dealer says. They're all great marketers, are they not? They're taught certain things to do and sometimes those things are not according to the law of love, correct? And I'm not just picking on car dealers, this is any marketing technique. And you simply ask, heart source, show me the truth. Now this is where you have to work within yourself on a regular basis to feel the truth within you, to discover what are your truth notices. Is it the way you feel? Is it a, a sensation in your head? Are you able to see the color? Can you hear the truth like a vibration that goes within you? You can be in your heart source and gather information from other lifetimes. Oh, I wasn't going to do this. Now we were going to have another session, but let's do it now. Don't you think that would be fun? I mentioned the power of the back of your heart center. I want you to go into there now. The back of your heart center. Go deep within. If some of you are having difficulty go deep within, move your focus a little bit more to center and sometimes a little bit up. There you go. Go deep within. And you will feel yourself go into what I call the sacred space. This is an amazing sacred space. It is also a travel room. I could teach you numerous, numerous things of how to use here. Let's go back to where we began by bringing in the person that you were upset about. I'm not asking you to bring that person into your energy field this time. I just want you to become aware of them. You have brought them with you in a way. Now I forgot to bring you to your altar. There is an altar in your sacred space. For some of you it will look like an altar altar. For others it will look like a table. For some it may look very different. In your sacred space, you are communicating with your soul self. For others who may not know that term, higher self. You are communicating with the wholeness of your soul energy. Now ask, show me please, what other lifetime? is this person, this event, connected to? Some of you are having an immediate recognition. Some of you may feel or experience something that are not sure. Others you may not be feeling or experiencing anything, but know that you have been answered. Now simply ask for healing of that event in that other lifetime. And notice any changes within yourself. When you do these exercises from your heart source, you are able to stay more firmly grounded into who it is you truly are, which is love incarnate. 
When you attempt to do these exercises outside of your heart source, you often have difficulty staying in the heart area and move into fear or into anger. That's why the heart source is so powerful. Remember, it merges with your light body. It merges with your energy field. It brings an activation throughout, which strengthens you in ways you were not aware that you needed strengthening. Now someone asked, how does my staying in my heart source affect other people? Will it help them stay in theirs? First of all, you staying in your heart source. When there are those who know nothing about the heart source, does assist people in staying in a place of love. Not love as in the emotional aspect of it, but to be able to stay focused and grounded. I have often said that your job is to be the eye of the storm, the calm within the center of the storm. When you are in your heart source, you are not contributing energy which keeps people stirred up. You are contributing centered energy, grounded energy, which assists people from not spinning off into other directions. You have heard of mob mentality. This is where a mob will take over in violence often, the riots, those kinds of things that happen. When you are within your heart source and you stay there within your heart source, you are forming your own force field around you, which prevents that mob mentality from taking over. The stronger your heart source, the more people that are there in their heart source, the less the possibility of people flying off into other directions. When you are with somebody who is mentally ill and they're having what this one might call a psychotic reaction, stay heart sourced. And just be there. If you're trained, of course, you can talk. Be there with that energy. Now that you know about your heart source, and I know all of you here have heard about it, but many reading this information will not know about it. Now that you know you have a responsibility, You do not have a responsibility when you do not know something, correct? But once you know, you have a responsibility to use this information. Practice it. Practice being in your heart source. Practice being there through the little things that happen through the day, the little irritations so that when you are in the big irritations, when you are in the midst of disaster in some way, you can stay centered and grounded and give support to those around you and to the people. Your being in your heart source will not teach others to be in your, their heart source unless they know the process but your being in the heart source will assist in keeping people from flying off the handle, as it were, from going into fear. All we did was connect parts of your energy field with the center of the universe, with the center of the earth and set intention. 
It costs nothing except time and awareness. And the power of it is amazing. I want to thank you for joining in this wonderful experience and being here and learning more. Please call upon me to assist you in working in this area. It only takes intention and commitment. And now, bow your head for my blessing which opens up the back of your third eye. As I send my love to you, and I ask now for your healing team to please heal the wound that is most interfering with you accepting the love which surrounds you. My love to you, precious ones. I am Amma, the Divine Mother of the Divine Mothers, and I am your mother. Well, this is Kathy, and I just want to thank you for being here. And I wish you the best. If you want to get a link to this, because I wasn't planning on sending it out, but people have asked for it. Um, send me an email so that I can do that. I wasn't going to send a general thing out, because this is going to be published in the Sedona Journal, so I don't want to take away from them, if that makes sense to you. Um, also, those of you who may be interested in the Sedona Journal, if you look up Light Technology, L-I-G-H-T-T-E-C-H-N-O-L-O-G-Y.com. Go to that website. There is an offer on there that if you fill out uh, a survey, they give you three months of their digital of their digital copies of Sedona Journal at no charge, kind of as a thanks for filling it out. So if you would like to have access to that and maybe see if you want to actually, uh, what am I going to say, take a subscription to the digital journal, you can certainly do that. So lighttechnology.com. Blessings, my love to each one of you. Thank you. Bye.